All right, everybody. Today I figured we might do something different and look at this creator music licensing that's in beta testing right now. Okay, so I don't know how this happened, but I somehow got into the beta testing for the creator music licensing program that YouTube's unrolling right now. So let's take a look at it. So I don't add a lot of music to my videos that would need to be licensed. I think it's easier to just avoid adding them, right? Um, when I do add songs, I usually just take them from the free to use YouTube library or it'll be something that I'm actually working on with a client and they've given me permission. So I don't know if I'm going to be using this a ton in the future, but I do think it's interesting and important for musicians and music creators to know about. So with that in mind, I wanted to look at this today. So what I've done here, just so we can kind of see what it looks like on the back end when you're uploading a YouTube video, is I've uploaded a, a copy of my previous YouTube video and just kind of, you know, gone through this process as quickly as possible until I got to the video elements section here. And this is new. So normally we would have subtitles and screen cards. I usually just do cards because I'm lazy. But... Uh, now there's this new option of add music licenses. And I noticed this like two days ago when I uploaded my previous video. So my introduction to it is pretty recent. And I don't know how they've been rolling out the beta testing for this, but it's new for me. So I wanted to look at it. So if you click on this learn more, you get this page all about licensing tracks, which is actually different from they have another page talking about how to get started with creator music. So we have these two pages that you can look at for more information. I'll link to these in the description below. But basically, I see two ways of looking at this, right, as a video creator or as a musician music creator. And... I have feelings about both, right? So as a video creator, it's kind of nice that you can easily now find, you know, some music. I don't know how much music is on this thing. And then pay a license to be able to use it within your video. And it's not like a binary thing where either you use music that's free to use or you get a copyright strike put on your, your video. YouTube has been pretty awful about that by some accounts, right? So basically the way it was before, to my limited understanding, is that YouTube was very binary about it, right? You could monetize a video, but if it sensed that there was a copyrighted song in the video, it would give you a copyright strike, and then monetization would be turned off for that video. I've had it happen before. I've had really good luck with contesting those and arguing that it's for educational purposes because I usually just use clips from things. So for example, I had a video where I was talking, I think I was talking about diegetic versus non diegetic diegetic music and film and that got a copyright strike on it at some point I think it was like months after I posted the video and so what I did is I contested it and I said hey I'm, I'm only using short clips from these films it's to give a lecture about film and audio and music and film whatever you want to say right it's for educational purposes and eventually the copyright strike was removed and um, you know it was fine but sometimes you can't argue that and sometimes you get a strike and it can't be reversed and now you lose out on all the revenue from that one video. And it's like, whatever, it's not like YouTube pays us that much for ad revenue, but, um, you know, it's a concern, right? So a lot of creators just will avoid using copyright and music in their videos. You just have to be very careful about what you do put in. But part of why I think this is worth talking about is that there was this gap previously where you could be a creator that is willing to pay for music, that wants to license music to then use in your videos and then still create ad revenue for yourself with your video. I'm putting it myself. And on the other side of that, you could be a musician that is willing to receive money in exchange for licensing out your songs to be used in YouTube videos. And there was no way to connect those two people. At least there is no way to connect those two people in an easy and accessible way. So. That's a big part of why I find this so interesting. Now, from the creator side of it, it looks kind of cool. So you can either search in creator music and license songs from there. You can do it while you, as you upload your video, so towards the end of the process, or even after the upload for what they say is a short period of time, a short amount of time. So you can go, you can find this content within the special creator music library, and then you can click and see the options for each song and buy your license, do whatever you're gonna do. And it looks like until you publish that video as public, you can also remove a license. So you have some flexibility as you're building your content. 
And from the perspective of the video creator, what these licenses are doing are essentially protecting you from a copyright strike. So that can have a huge benefit to a video creator that is hoping to get some ad revenue. It's not a lot, but get some ad revenue from their videos, from their views. And, you know, from the musician's perspective, it's another platform that you could try to collect some revenue from as well. So it seems like it should be something that would be mutually beneficial to both groups. But I'm sure as we see the details of how this unfolds, there might be some some issues with it, just like all the issues with streaming and how little that pays or, you know, the Google ad revenue and how little that pays. I'm sure this won't be immune to that. Or I would bet that this wouldn't be immune to that at least. And it does seem like they did some cool stuff that adds some flexibility into the system. So depending on the song, there are going to be different options available. I'm assuming that's because the musician is able, the music creator is able to set those terms and and say what they're willing and able to do. But the basic idea seems to be that video creators can do something like pay an upfront fee and then, you know, retain all of the ad revenue for their video, or they can do something like ad revenue sharing with the musician. So there do seem to be some options here. And there are some requirements if you want to choose to use a track and you want to choose the revenue sharing option. There are some requirements for how you can qualify for revenue sharing. So according to YouTube, if the track is licensable, but you don't want to buy a license, you can share revenue by using the track for less than 30 seconds in a video that's longer than three minutes. And if the track is not licensable, but is eligible for revenue sharing, you can share revenue by using as much of the track as you want in a video of any duration. So that would so that would be something I believe that the musician should carefully consider when they're choosing what options to to supply there. And then other than that, you have to not have any other existing monetization issues. So you can't have copyright strikes for other reasons, basically, is what it seems like. And then you can't have it on any live streams or shorts videos. So this is only for the standard YouTube videos right now is what it what it seems like. So YouTube claims that you can use mainstream music in your videos using this creator music catalog, which sounds pretty exciting. So I'm excited to look at that in a second here. But the process seems to be that you search that creator music catalog and then you look at the usage terms for the song, the different options available for the song. Then you pick what license you want to get, right? Do you want to get an upfront license? Do you want to do revenue sharing? Stuff like that. Are there any restrictions on the songs? Is there any, are there any restrictions? on your videos. Those are things to consider throughout this process. Then you can apparently really easily purchase your license, purchase with whichever option you want. And then what they seem to recommend is downloading and then adding that song to your video and then adding your license when you upload it. So you want to link that license to that specific video. And you do want to pay attention to the terms of the license, right? So some of the licenses for the songs will specify that you can only use it for one video, for example. So you can't use it across your channel multiple times. Do not do that. Just the one video. Um, You can't transfer it to anybody else, so you can't be passing around this song for everyone else to use. Stuff like that that seems like it should be pretty obvious, but um, it's good to mention, I guess. Another good thing to mention is that these are only available on YouTube videos. So if you get a song using the Creator Music licensing system on YouTube for your YouTube video, you... If you're making shorts out of that video, for example, and then you want to upload them to another platform like TikTok or Instagram or what have you, it seems like you do not have a license to do that with the song. So you'd have to take the song out for those short videos that are going to be posted elsewhere on a different platform. So that's something to keep in mind. But I don't want to focus too much on the video creators here, right? I want to focus more on the musician, the music creator. And it seems like for the music creator, this could be a really good thing, right? There's this whole system that YouTube has built for flagging copyrighted material, you know, identifying copyrighted material and um, protecting copyright. And now they're allowing musicians to tap into that to hopefully create more revenue for themselves. Another thing to keep in mind is that rules about things like revenue sharing will change based on what country you're in. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of legalese there about that that um, you should keep in mind and know what's relevant to you and your country and look at the song details because it might depend on where the song creator is as well. And I would suspect that it has the most to do with where the actual song creator is is located, the music creator, the person who's owning the copyright. 
So with that said, let's look at this. Let's pretend I want to add some music here. Add a license from Creative Music. Um, okay. So I have no purchase, no downloaded, no saved. So let's visit Creative Music. I'm going to put my headphones on. So I can't play this for you because I am not going to pay for all these songs right now. But it does look like they have some selection here. Okay, so it's editing Kato here again. And I'm just going to show you a sped up version of my searches here so you can kind of see what I saw. But basically what I want you to look at is in the search criteria, who I'm searching for, what pops up. Things tend to pop up, but then the big thing to look at are these icons right here because that tells you whether or not something can even be licensed. So a lot of these artists that look like they pop up and they have content in the library don't have anything that's available for licensing at all if you look at this icon here. And I'll get into this after the sped up search section, but I just wanted you to know what to look at here. So yeah, they have a lot of music on here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to include everything that I just did, but I just ran a search for a bunch of artists that popped into my head. Um, a lot of like mainstream artists and stuff that I, I don't know, it pops into my head for whatever reason. So they, they do have a lot of um, music in here. But it is interesting. So these all have this icon here. Using this track will make your video ineligible for monetization. And you can search based off price. Duration, BPM. It's pretty cool that they have the BPM thing. Vocals or instrumentals, moods, genres. That's cool. So they have like some search features here that are pretty, pretty good. But yeah, so like when I searched Regina Specter, everything was ineligible for monetization. But now here, like there are some atmosphere tracks where revenue sharing is an option. So you have to pay attention to what these icons here, what the options are, and then you can get more information on it by clicking here, let's see. So it looks like revenue sharing is an option for this track, but they don't have download available for it yet. So this is probably something about the beta test rollout, um, but it looks like you can get the license and then you can use the song for revenue sharing, but you just have to find it elsewhere, maybe? Maybe that's what it is? That's kind of what it looks like to me. Yeah, so I just looked it up. So they have downloads available for licensable songs, but the revenue sharing ones, they do not have downloads yet for. So let's say I like this. I can add it to my library, which I think is the same as hitting the heart. Yeah. But if I click this here, it'll show license available songs. And a lot of them are discounted to zero right now. I think they really want people to use the system. Um, so if I get a song... So it looks like this is free just because they're comping everyone's first purchase up to $15. So that's cool, I guess. I hope they're paying the artists. So if you hit buy license here, it just pops up a PayPal and then asks you to pay. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. But you have your home, you have your browse, you have your library. You can check out your license tracks or your saved tracks. Oh, you know, it's funny. I just realized I'm wearing this Atmosphere shirt and I was searching Atmosphere. So I don't know. The system seems pretty simple. It might be worth trying to get your music into this if you're a musician. Um, it'll be interesting to see how successful this is for musicians in terms of actual uh, revenue. I'll be very interested to see how that turns out because I am very skeptical of all of that at this point. But um, yeah, I guess that's just a tour of what I'm looking at here and what my thoughts are about it. Let me know what you all think. And from the musician perspective, it looks like there, there are options that you can use to get your music into the creator music. So for example, if you're on DistroKid, apparently that now comes with that uh, YouTube content ID option that you can, you can choose as an add-on when you upload a song. So that seems like it would be pretty easy to get your music into the system if you're interested in that. Uh, I have not tried it out yet, though, so maybe someone in the comments below can talk about that if anyone has tried that that whole experience from the musician, from the music creator's perspective.
But at least from the DistroKid perspective, it looks like you just upload your song as usual. You check off that YouTube uh, content creator content ID option, the extra checkbox. And then once you've opted into that, DistroKid just sends your song out to the YouTube creator music library and it's on there. And it's interesting because they don't say anything about choosing how much you want to sell your song for. But rather, they talk about how the license fee will vary based on the su- subscriber count of the YouTube creator that is actually buying your license. So if they have, you know, between a thousand and a hundred thousand um, subscribers, then it's going to be about ten dollars per license. If it's a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand, it's going to be about twenty five dollars per license. If it's five hundred thousand to five million, it's going to be about forty dollars. And then if it's five million plus, it's going to be like seventy five dollars. So that's interesting. They're not having the musician decide how much it will cost. They are automatically doing that based off of the subscriber count for the YouTuber. And I wonder if that'll benefit the musicians in the long run. Right. If that automatic tier system actually benefits them, because otherwise I could see competition driving down the price. And then you have these YouTubers getting millions and millions of views, paying like $5 for a license. I could see that happening in a system that's not automatically tiered the way this one is. So I wonder if that's a good thing. I don't know. I guess we'll see how it plays out. Hey, it's Editing Kato, and I just wanted to pop in with this one idea. I got close to it later in the video, but I wanted to put it here as well. And it's just the idea that, you know, this way it might avoid driving down prices, but The question is what video creator is going to pick my music when they could have something like, for example, a Billie Eilish track for the same exact price. So my thought is if I'm understanding the way it is now and I'm not misunderstanding it, then the way it is now, it might only end up helping the big guys, so to speak, the people that don't really need the help. And I'll put a link to DistroKid's statement about this whole system in the description below. There's some interesting stuff in there. You know, like, for example, the license fee is split 50-50 with publishers. So if you have another publisher, um, if you have like a publishing administrator, then they're going to collect 50% and DistroKid is going to collect 50% um, from that fee. And, you know, I was wondering from the musician's perspective, from the music creator's perspective, is it is it just something right now that's accessible to major labels or, or labels in general? Or is it something that the average music creator can do? And the fact that you can just opt into it easily through something like DistroKid shows that they're they're trying to make this uh, something that's kind of democratized to some extent, right? So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. All right. So with all that said, we explored it a little bit. I do have some questions and concerns and or concerns about how this is all being put together. So upon closer inspection, right, it looks like a lot of these pop songs that look like they're in the system actually aren't available at all within the system. You can find them, you can see them, but it looks like there is no, there are no monetization options for them. So that sucks a little bit. I think one of the big benefits of this is being able to get one of those pop tracks that you previously could never even consider using in a video um, in your video, right? And so that raises the question for me about whether or not this is actually going to take off. I mean, I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential here. I think it could become something that's big and and helps musicians and video creators uh, do what they want to do, really, I guess. But... um, You know, there are some details that I think are kind of interesting, like artists can set expiration dates on their licenses. So, for example, I could buy a license in the system and it might expire after two years. And then I have to go remember to renew my license, which I am never going to do. So I'm just going to avoid anything that has an expiration date on it. And I think there are other things in there that would cause video creators to avoid using the system. Right. The fact that for one, the musician can change or the music creator can change their terms at any given time, apparently. Well, there are libraries where you can buy music, um, you know, pay for the license to use it, right? Which is very similar to what what this is if you're not doing the revenue sharing option. Um, and the terms will not change on you. You won't have someone claiming copyright on your video a couple of years down the road, right? So as a video creator, it makes me wonder um, 
when are people going to decide to choose this option over the other options out there? And it can only help musicians if the video creators are choosing this option, right? If they're choosing to pay into this option for the musicians. And the other thing, you know, is I know a lot of these music libraries where you buy a license, you have the rights to the entire song. Whereas with this creator music uh, system, there are a lot of songs that are very limited in how you can use them. So, for example, sometimes you can only use 30 seconds of the song, right? Um, I think we looked at that a minute ago. And, you know, these prices might be considered expensive compared to the competition. I can see people paying these prices for massive pop hits, but for everything else, they might be considered fairly expensive, right? If you know about all the options out on the market, it raises questions. And I guess... I guess all of this kind of boils down to the idea that there's a lot of ambiguity. There are very limited terms. Um, you know, my reaction as a video creator is, is, what do you mean they can change the terms on me after I've already paid, right? So the question is, how many video creators are going to actually switch over to using this system? And again, I see a benefit for people who really just want to get a very specific pop track in their video, right? There wasn't a previous system to do that without getting flagged by the content ID system. Um, but if if it's going to take off for that reason, then they need to get more pop songs that are actually available within the system. So I know it's early, it's in beta right now, but I guess my big concern is, is what it's going to end up looking like, what these terms are going to actually end up looking like, um, and whether or not it's going to be able to compete with the alternatives out there, right? I can see that for major pop artists, this might be a great way to get more income. And so like a lot of things in our society, it might end up being one of those things that kind of benefits those that don't need it the most, right? The people that are already doing well. Um, because I feel like for the small creator, for the small music creator, I wonder how much of an impact it's going to actually have. How often will video creators actually choose to opt into this system instead of just going with a free music library? I guess we'll see. But other than that, I think we've looked at it. We've talked about it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've used the system, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm curious about it. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. I hope YouTube doesn't um, get mad at me for making this video. So we're going to see. But other than that, I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash noise. And my patrons get access to additional content, early release videos. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. I'm knocking things over on my desk. Um, we have a book club that we've been doing on the Discord server. That's been a lot of fun. And I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thanks so much for hanging out. Okay. All right. We'll see how rambly and long that video ends up being. I don't know what I'm doing. I just wanted to kind of check it out and, and see what it looked like. Um, so I just spent twice as long, at least, filming a video as I usually do because I was looking into it as I filmed it. And it'll be interesting to see what this video turns out like. That's for sure. Now I have to go look and see if I'm even allowed to make a video about this. Maybe I'll do it anyway. Yeah, that's it. Oh, goodbye.